everyone, welcome to Viva Hawaii. I'm your host, Maria Mera, and today I want to show you a different view of Hawaii, one from above. And for that, I brought my guest, Aaron Begley. Aaron is a drone videographer, and uh, he's going to show us Hawaii and the islands uh, with his work. Hola, muy buenas tardes y bienvenidos a Viva Hawaii. Hoy os voy a enseñar una eh, perspectiva distinta de Hawaii, una desde arriba, eh, y para ello me he traído a mi invitado de hoy, a, a Aaron Begley. Aaron es un videógrafo que, que toma eh, camarógrafo con drones y nos va a enseñar la vista de las islas pues, desde arriba. Aaron, thank you very much for joining us and thank you for coming to the studio. Yes, definitely. Thank you for having me on. So, uh, just let's let's start basic for our audience who are not like drone users or maybe some of them are. But tell us, uh, what is a drone? All right, so a drone is basically it's an any type of unmanned aerial vehicle. So you'll often hear drone associated with the names UAS or UAV. UAV. Stands for unmanned aircraft system, or unmanned aerial vehicle, that sort of thing. But it's really it's anything that can be remotely piloted in the air. Okay, and what is your work? What do you do? So, so I do aerial videography and aerial photography. So you know how there's regular aerial video or, uh, regular photographers and videographers doing the same thing, but now from a new perspective, putting it up in the air. Whereas uh, before you used to have to use helicopters or airplanes. Now you can use drones to do those sort of things. Okay, I want to show our audience what you do, but I think uh, better than just uh, talking about it, let's first uh, show some videos. And vamos a ver un video de, de el trabajo de nuestro invitado para que tengáis una idea de lo que estamos hablando.
Okay, well, a picture is worth a thousand words or something like that, no? <laughs> Una imagen vale más que mil palabras. Uh, so, how did you get into drawing? Uh, so basically, I, first, I, when I started making videos, I was using just GoPros or whatever I could get my hands on. And then I really started seeing other people's aerial videos, and it kind of uh, inspired me to, first, I had to figure out how they did it once I saw those videos. I was like, how are they getting those angles? What are they using? So I would send out messages to people that made the videos, and that's when I learned about drones. And immediately, as soon as I figured that out, I had to go get one. So, so uh, there are many drones, and help me here. There are $50 drones, $30,000 drones. What's the difference? Uh, so it basically depends on what exactly you're trying to do with it and also your budget for it, really. So like obviously Hollywood productions, when they're out here filming for Jurassic World, that sort of thing, they're going to be using those $30,000 drones that can carry heavier, um, nicer Heavy duty. cameras. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then the cheaper drones, those are more for just playing around. Um, and then there's... How many drones do you have to crash to become a good <laughs> <laughs> pilot? Or uh, I How usually... many drones did you crash? <laughs> so I've, I, I think... Only two. I think we'll only okay. crashed two drones, but yeah. So maybe a tip for someone who starts is to get the cheap ones until you learn a little more. Yeah, or? yeah, definitely get get a cheaper drone because you're not a you're not a true drone operator until you've crashed one. Really. Give us more tips and let's let's get into regulations. What as a drone user, um, do you have a do you need a license or you can just go and let's let's stay in the state of Hawaii, which is where we are. Mm -hmm. And uh, what do you need to be able to go to the Alamoana Beach Park and drone? There. Okay, so there's basically two um, two operators when it comes to drones. There's uh, people who are just doing it for fun, recreational, and there's people who are doing it for business, commercial. So doing it recreationally, all you have to do is um, register with the FAA. They'll you can do it online. It's real cheap. You just get a little registration number and you put that on your drone, and, and then you're and then you're legal to fly okay. if you're in approved areas. So you your drone is legal to fly, or you are legal to fly. So it's it's both. So I do it commercially. So for the commercial side of it, you have to register the drone, same as recreational. But then the actual pilot. Um, has to get a, what's called a remote airman certificate. So it's basically like a drone operator's license or a drone driver's license, if okay. you will. So that's what I had to get. It's the FAA's Part 107, which is actually a new rule that just went into effect about three weeks ago. Okay. So that's what I had that's, to do too. Uh, we are on top of the news. Uh, so what do you need to do? Do you need to pass a test? or? Yes, yeah, so you'll go to... Um, go to an FA testing facility, you have to take an online test, and it's about 60 questions, basically just running you through um, airman knowledge. So you have to know airspace, you have to know uh, what to do in emergency situations, that like sort of thing. Like a driving's driver's license. Yes, yeah, it's, it's very similar to a driver's license. And do you license. also have like a practice? So no, right now there's there's not an actual practical. It's mainly just, it's just the written portion of the test, so. Okay, so um, let's let's go to the regulation part. What do you, what regulations do you see in the FAA that, or would you like to see? Um, um, well, that with the practical, I think the FAA's laws, I, I love that they loosen it up. That's what um, gave me the ability to start doing it commercially, but I think they actually need to tighten them up just a little bit because there's a lot of people that you can go and sure you can take an online test, but uh, taking an online test doesn't, doesn't prove that you actually that know how to fly a drone. Yeah. So what are the things that you have to be careful with is you cannot go closer to a private, pro we all know like with the airports that have been issued, you have to be like five miles away mm -hmm. or something like that. Yeah, so airports, uh, you have to be five miles away from, you can't fly over 400 feet, you can't fly at night. Uh, there's uh, lots of different regulations. You have to keep it within visual line of sight when you're flying. Mm -hmm. Of course, if you're doing that commercially you can get permits and waivers from the FAA so that you can fly at night. There has been a few companies that have gotten approved to, to do fly at night and fly within certain distances from airports. What about we we've also seen in the news like people shooting drones because they were too close to their houses or mm -hmm. uh, how, There's how a, is that? I can't speak too much on it because there's actually a really uh, famous case that's getting ready to go down at the federal level okay. with someone in Kentucky who used a shotgun to shoot down a drone. The, the judge in Kentucky ruled 
that it was that they had permission because the drone was spying on them, was invading their privacy. So the judge ruled in favor of the person who shot it down. But then they appealed, and now it's at the federal level. So uh, so that we'll would see. be that's, a good uh, that's gonna, precedent to yeah. That's going to be a pretty uh, pretty big case, basically, to to define the the regulations for drones and privacy. And so I I have the feeling that many drone users are saying, let's take advantage of this now before they limit us to to a, a more um, it's kind of a uh, almost a little bit I don't want I really want to term it this but it's kind of like the wild wild west right now as far as in the <laughs> air because there's the regulations have gotten loosened up like and there's the H1 so many, there with yeah, everybody so many people are starting to put them up in the air and start flying drones that uh, they're just gonna keep filming what, up the what other, um I've seen like all kinds of uh, things that people do with the uh, most of them are for good, like they are planting trees or for agricultural purposes or fires. And I've seen drone surfing. What would you like to see out there? How would you see a drone? What what uses for a drone would you give? I think the uh, the government actually needs to start incorporating drones more into their use. Now, I'm not talking about the military because obviously they have their drones, but just the general government for like civil uses, so fire departments using them, as you mentioned, to, uh, help uh, put the thermal imaging on, they can help um, detect hot spots in buildings, um, different things, search and rescue, that sort of thing. I think there just needs to be more use because really I don't think people understand how, how, how much Useful. good uses you can get out of drones, how many different things you can actually use them for and how much easier they can make life. Okay, I'm gonna put you on the hot seat, but what do you think of these drone uses for military purposes, like drone strikes without really risking your life and just uh, hitting a village in yeah. Yemen or Yeah, so I, I have a little bit of military experience. It wasn't flying drones or anything like that, but um, it's good from the perspective that we're not having to put troops on the ground but also, I think uh, I think we overuse drones a little bit. I think we, because uh, it can also go the other way around too. Yeah, right? there's often, uh, unfortunately, a lot of uh, civilian casualties when we're we're using drone strikes. So um, I think we we definitely need to limit our drone use a little bit. That's that's why the the public has such a negative connotation when you you hear the word drone. They automatically either assume that it's the drone bombing or it's uh, the spying. Yeah, the news that we get are usually something something big um we're gonna take a break and we'll continue showing your videos and talking about your work which is really i, I find really exciting um, vamos a hacer un descanso vamos a seguir hablando con aaron eh, en cuanto volvamos pero eh, enseguida volvemos welcome to asia in the wheel looking forward to see you next month on october 13 thursday at 11 o'clock Hi, I'm Jay Fidel. That's Ted Ralston. You know, Ted is the uh, host of uh, Where the Road Leads. It shows uh, every Friday from 4 to 5 p.m. It's about technology. It's about how people are collaborating and solve problems with modern technology. It's where the road leads. We all know that. We should all be listening. Join us there, 4 to 5 p.m. every Friday. Now, what about that do you agree with? All of it. I knew he'd say that. Aloha. Say aloha. Aloha. Good. Aloha and welcome to the Savvy Chick Show on Think Tech Hawaii. I'm the weekly host at 11 a.m. Honolulu time. Very excited for the next six weeks we have the Aspire series, which is all about the coolest careers I could find and interviewing and getting insights from these amazing people who want to share it with you and help you live your dreams. Look forward to seeing you on the show. Aloha! Welcome back. We are live. We are here, Viva Hawaii, and uh, we are talking to Aaron Begley, and uh, very exciting, very exciting work. And we are going to keep uh, showing his work. In fact, eh, estamos de vuelta en Viva Hawaii. Seguimos hablando con Aaron Begley, que es eh, un videógrafo en las islas de Hawaii, nada menos. So, why Hawaii? Did you pick this state to come work with the drones, or it was just randomly? Uh, it, it just happened. It, it was kind of just by fate, really. I just started getting into drones. Um, I was getting ready to graduate college, and then I actually have a friend that's stationed down here in the Navy, so he invited me to come and move in and live with him. He had an extra room open, so that's how I originally got down here. And uh, 
I'm originally from Indiana, okay. so the market for using drones is so much larger down in, here. Of course, in Hawaii, yeah. Yeah, the scenery here, and of course all the tourism, there's a lot more uses. So what, what, what uses do you give to your drone? I see, I, I've heard like weddings maybe, or uh, so real estate sometimes. What do you, what are you working on right now? Okay, so for the most part, I mainly deal with construction and real estate. I also do, I mean, I've done some weddings. There's a lot of different other things. I've done just some basic videos where people are in Hawaii and they want some aerial footage because it looks cool. Uh, but for the most part, it's construction and real estate. So I'm actually working with uh, Nordic PCL Construction right now. Okay. They just um, did an expansion over at Punahou School. So okay. there's a really cool video that I'm working on putting together and I'm hoping to release uh, later So you, this you week. are seeing how it grows and how the, the construction starts uh, building or? Yeah, so they, they brought me in at the end of it and they had a 3D rendering where it was a fly through of the 3D of the, of the actual school. And then I put the drone up now that the school's complete. So we, we're taking that 3D rendering that they had and we're pairing that together with the real footage so we can say, hey, look what we're gonna build and then look what we did build. So it's, it's looking pretty cool. Like I said, I'm pretty excited uh, to uh, release bring, that video. Bring that to us next time. <laughs> what else are you are you working on? Uh, so this past weekend, I flew out to Big Island over to um, it's called Camilo Point, and I did a little bit of work with Vice Media. They they came in and they're doing a story on uh, the trash. There's a Camilo Beach over there is a really famous for the, the trash. It's a, there's a huge garbage patch out in the Pacific Ocean and basically because of the trade winds it all gets blown into the beach so I worked with them, got some aerial footage of what that trash looks like to uh, kind of educate the public on You're going to have to do a lot of work for Think Tech Hawaii. <laughs> um, I want to, actually this is how we met. We met through Jorge Crivilles who is a Spanish swimmer who came to do the Molokai channel and he, in fact he did, he did for in 18 hours, <laughs> he did and uh, while he was swimming there were more than just water in the uh, in the channel um, but you you were working in that Molokai channel for someone else different swimmer uh, same conditions same boat but uh, different just different swimmer who took a different decision that uh, Jorge did but how about we show that video so people uh, get the story complete um, uh, Jorge Cribillés es un nadador español que vino y nadó, le tuvimos aquí en el estudio y nadó el canal de Molokai. Eh, es así como conocí a Aaron y, y él estaba grabando también eh, otra nadadora eh, en, otra, en otro momento, eh, pero el mismo barco, mismas condiciones, lo único que, bueno, pues Jorge lo acabó. Eh, vamos a ver ese vídeo que...
So were you in that boat? Yeah, so I was up top riding with the captain when uh, we first spotted the shark. He was taking way too long to jump back in the boat to me. Well, he, what do you think? Were, he, you ask, were you saying, just get the heck out of there? Yeah, is yeah. That, was that your feeling? I, I didn't know what was going to happen. All I knew is that uh, whatever it was, I wanted to get it on, on video. My, okay, you uh, were, Yeah, my heart was pounding. My adrenaline was So when you're droning that, um, and again, yes, I just want to say, Jorge had two or three sharks behind him. And he kept going all the way to Oahu, so just for the Spaniard. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But anyway, so when you're when you're droning, you, you can see it in your iPad or your own, your own screen. Yeah, so I use the iPad so I can see the live HD footage of what I'm shooting as it's happening. So that's what that's what enables me to uh, keep the keep the shark in frame the whole time that it was swimming around her. So what do you need? And, and sorry again if these are stupid questions, but it's for, for people who don't know, who don't use drones usually, uh, do you need satellite connection? Do you need a Wi-Fi? What do you what do you need to use the drone that you use? Yeah, so it actually it depends on the model and the brand, whoever makes the drone. There's different ones that use different satellites, different things. Some drones don't even have satellites or GPS, but the most common is the one that I was using there. It's a DJI, and it does, it picks up, um, it, you have to pick up six different satellites for it to be able to fly, and then it locks in its GPS signal. So as long as you're um, anywhere that, with open airspace, you're going to be able to pick up those satellites. You do? Okay. Yeah. And what, what if there are more drones? Do they... Can, can they confuse each other? Or? I've, I've heard stories. I've never had it happen. I've been flying around a couple other drones before, and it makes the signal really weak, but I've never had uh, problems. Like, some people have had problems to where the signals will actually get crossed. Cross and, and, okay. Yeah, yeah, but I've never experienced it. <laughs> Leave my drone alone. <laughs> yeah. What is the, your, favorite, uh, your favorite place to go and drone? Ooh, that's a tough one. I think here in Hawaii it's probably going to be... Mm, Halona Blowhole, either Halona Blowhole or uh, Makapu'u. There's some really beautiful scenic areas over there. You, you do work in all the islands? You told us you were in the big island. You do work in all the islands in general? or Yeah, you're yeah. Just... All, the, all the islands in general, wherever they need me, I'll just uh, grab the drone. And luckily, um, the FAA has started to loosen that up as far as traveling with drones because they use a LiPo battery, the lithium polymer battery. So it used to be really hard to travel with those batteries, but they're starting to loosen that up. So yeah, now I can just grab the drone, keep it as my carry-on, and I'll hop on a plane and go wherever they need okay. me. Okay, uh, so you're bringing another point. Your drone goes with batteries. You, you have to charge the battery. How, how long does it go? Okay, so that depends on the type of drone, again. Pretty much every question, it's always the type of drone, but for yeah. the drone I use, it's about uh, 25 to 28 minutes of, uh, of battery life in the air before, um, before So that's to really not out. too much. That's something no. you think, you, are you hoping they will improve that? Yeah, I would say the next big leap in drone technology is going to be increasing the battery life, making them, uh, enabling them to stay up in the air longer. What happens uh, if you're in the boat uh, and the battery dies, it, it would just so you have to be careful. Yes, yeah, to you have bring to be very drone. careful. They, they have really good safety features to where um, if you're on land and it starts to die, it'll turn around and it'll fly back to you. <laughs> but if you're on a boat, you can't record that point with the GPS. So uh, you have to be really, really careful. I've seen some videos where people weren't as, uh, as lucky as me when they were filming on boats. So um, tell me one thing. What's your passion? I have an idea of that, but what is your passion? It's it's, it's drones video. It's droning. Yeah, aerial <laughs> videography, anything with drones. I just uh, I love seeing those perspectives, and uh, really, it's not only me, but I love being able to show other people like look what you can do with drones. Look at these drones; aren't scary. They're not spying on you. They're just capturing amazing pictures and videos. I think uh, just talking to you and looking at your eyes, I knew I knew your answer. Uh, thank you very much, Aaron, for being here and uh, for joining us. And I really hope you keep bringing us your work. We would love to show it. Oh, definitely. Thanks for having me on. Muchas gracias a todos. Volvemos en octubre, el día 10. Eh, gracias por vernos y esperemos que el, el debate de Hillary Trump haya ido a la prórroga y podamos ver un poco. Thank you very much for, for joining us today and we'll see you October 10th.